All right, so the 13th tutorial uh, in our series, and it's about arrays. Now, as I've mentioned to you a couple times now, got Big Toe Interactive's five pillars of action script. You've got variables, and in, in the order that we're covering them, I'll say them. Variables, we've covered. Functions, we've covered. Event listeners, we covered just recently. Arrays, number four. Loops are number five, which are going to be the next tutorial. So five pillars action script for variables, functions, event listeners, arrays, and loops. In no particular order really, but that's just the order we've covered them. So now we're going over arrays, and this, I know I say this a lot, but this will we're making big steps here because this is the beginning. As our series goes on, we're going to be making smaller steps, but we're going to be tying everything together, which is a lot harder, actually. So uh, it'll seem like big steps when you actually put it together and have something that looks like a really simple game, but at least it's a game. So what is an array? An array is just a way what's a way a real world example of what an array is I'd say it's a DVD a DVD shelf now if you have all these DVDs like a lot of us do and if you didn't have a shelf to put those in where would they all be they would there would be five sitting on the coffee table there'd be two on the couch one on top of the TV some in the kitchen you know so when you buy that DVD shelf, as we all do at some point, you're, you're taking a common item. Sure, they're different movies or games or whatever they are, but they're common. They're, it's media. It's a disc. Say they're all movies. You're taking a bunch of common things that are scattered, and you're putting it in one place. And if you want to look for a movie... Assuming you're organized and put them back on the shelf, you know where they are. So that's the best way to explain what an array is and hopefully give you a window into why it's useful. So I've simplified our project inside our flash file. We've just got these three weapons, the crossbow, the lance, and the sword, which you know from last tutorial. So here we go. I've created instances, I've created global variables. Once again, they're not inside of any function, which makes them global. Um, so we've got three of those, one for each weapon. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our array. So let's call it weapons. And remember after the colon, you put what type of object you're creating, in this case, an array and a new array at that. So we're calling the constructor function of the array class. Once again, this is, it's blue. This is one of Flash's built-in classes they made for us. Array equals new array. The array is called weapons. So now that that exists, we're not gonna put anything in it yet, but our start game function is gonna be called. And you know what, first let's just just to separate things neatly, let's have a load array function. You could call it load weapons. You know, I'll call it load array because it's more literal to what we're doing. But this is the type of thing that you would do when your game was starting: load characters, load enemies, load items. You know, this is what you would do. It's called populating an array when you fill it with something. Uh, we're just going to call it load array. Let's keep it human language for all you non-programmer programmers out there like me. So we're gonna load the array. So how do you how do you populate how do you load an array? Arrays are made of indexes starting at zero and going up. So the first item in an array is index zero, not one. Keep that in mind. 
So weapons, it's that simple. You call it by its name. This is a global array. It's not inside of a function. I can call it anywhere I want. So weapons zero equals sword. Weapons one equals, whoops, lance. Weapons, Jesus, I can't type. What is wrong with me? Crossbow, cross no. Um, so we, I've just loaded three items into our array. Sword is loaded at the first index. The first thing in an array is zero. The sword, the lance, the crossbow. So we're gonna, we've loaded our array. So as you can see in our constructor function of our document class, main, main, the same name signifies it's the constructor. Once again here, notice Again, I'm trying to repeat these things. I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive, but this is really important things to understand. When I say constructor function, we've gone over this, but I just want to relate back to it. Variable sword equals sword, new sword. Well, that's the constructor function of the sword class. It's sword, sword. Main is my document class. Here you can see the title. You can see the name of the file is main.as. Again, main, main, main. The constructor function matches the name of the class itself. And that's, that's what you're doing whenever you create a new array, a new crossbow, a new lance. You're calling the constructor function, which is why it creates a new item when I write it. So I hope that's making sense. So we have our array, we call load array when our constructor, when our game loads, we call load array first. It fills the array with these three weapons, and then we call start game, which is now empty. But first, just to show you how we can see if things in our array, a property of an array is length. Length is one of the many properties of an array. So we're going to trace the length of our array to see that there are things in it. And what's our length going to be? Not 2, even though the last index is 2, it's going to be 3. We can see up here, 3 items in the array, 3 things. So just to show you that it's working, I'm going to comment out are loading and it's going to be zero. Zero up here. So uncomment that back. So that's just that's a good way to test that what you've loaded into your array is actually there. You can test the length property and this is going to be very handy uh, when we get to loops because we're going to be looping through the array and checking things in each spot. So what we're going to do is, we're, this is a very simple tutorial, we're just going to be adding things to the screen, but I want to show you the way that we're adding them is what's different and what's better, a lot better. So you, you remember this traditional way of adding something to the screen, you just set its coordinates, which you still have to do with an array, but you say add child sword and you're referring to it directly. So it's going to put the sword on the screen at 150 by 150 XY. There's the sword. So I can say the same thing, but instead of referring to it in a sloppy manner, this is instead of going over to your, you know, pulling your hand on, under the couch and pulling out your DVD of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you say, you know what? I'm not going to refer to it as Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I'm going to, which I don't even know where Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is. It's under the couch. I'm going to say, I'm going to grab the first thing on my DVD rack. So my DVD rack is my weapons array. And the first thing on it is index zero. So there we go. It's the same exact 
result. It's the same exact object. It's the same, but it's better. And and you'll you may you're like, why is it better? What? Well, the more we build on it, and the more items you're dealing with, you just can't work without doing this. You know, we're, you can't keep track of everything. You can't properly hit test without arrays when you have a lot of things on screen. You just can't, your game would be a mess. It'd, it'd be, I don't even think you could make it, at least not sophisticated enough of a game that people would want to play it. So, once again, saying weapons index zero is the same thing as saying sword directly. What, what these are, what putting something in an array is, is storing a reference to it. Now, that's not making a copy, I want to be clear, because let's, um, well, I'm not going to get into that, because that's, that's going to, I'm afraid it's going to confuse you, but it's not making a copy. When you're dealing with the more complicated objects, um, not just the basic operators, I can't, the word's not coming to me of what they're called, but when you, when you store a, an integer, for example, it is a copy. But when you're storing a movie clip or a sprite or display object, it's a reference. So this is a reference to Lance, a reference to Sword. It's, it's almost like if you imagine like a triangle and one, one point is the sword and the other two sides are both pointing at the sword. You can say sword or you can say weapons zero. They're both pointing at this sword graphic here. So think of it that way. You're referencing an object. So it's that simple. And just to show you, you know, weapons, let's add child weapons one, which we have to change the position. Do the positioning again still. But weapons one. Lance. It's that Lance that we put it on the screen. And the same thing for the crossbow. I'm not going to do it. but So that's an array. That's how you set up an array. That's how you use the array. This may seem like, what's the point? Well, we're going to introduce you to loops. And we're going to be looping through the array. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, we're going to be looping through the array. So... I'm going to blow your mind in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to put my, my plug that I put at the end of the tutorial, and I, I put it at the end as to make it at least offensive as possible, because if you got to the end of the tutorial, I'm hoping you got something out of it. Check out Urban Santa on the Apple App Store. It's for iPad. You actually need iPad 2 or higher for it to run properly. It'll run for a while on iPad 1, but I'm not sure how, how far you get. So if you think these tutorials are valuable and you do want to give a dollar back, go to the App Store and get Urban Santa. The link is on the YouTube description. Thank you.